Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I would also like to thank our organizers today, uh, MAI, uh, SAE Malaysia, Nano Malaysia. It's certainly a, a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, a quick story uh, that I found interesting that I thought I'd share with you. I was speaking with my father uh, last night. He's retired, he's in the US. And um, I was telling him that I was in Kuala Lumpur and I was giving a presentation on the future of the automobile, and he started laughing at me. I said, Why? what's so funny about that? And he said, well, let me remind you, when you were a young kid, your first car was a 1974 Honda Civic, and you knew to put gas in the car, but you weren't smart enough to put oil in the car. And you ran that car for a long time without putting any oil in it until the engine block fused together and we basically had to throw the entire car away. So he said, I find it somewhat ironic that you're giving a presentation on the future of automobiles when you don't even know to put oil in the vehicle. So I thought that was kind of funny, but then I told him, actually, I seem to be ahead of the game, ahead of the curve, because in the future, automobiles won't require oil. They'll all be electric. So ha ha, the joke's on you, uh, Dan. Um, I, I hope that I'm still in the will and I hope he still loves me. I'm not, I'm not sure uh, after that. So um, with that introduction, uh, again, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Court Eisenhagen, Managing Director for Lux Research. Uh, for those of you that don't know Lux, uh, we are a market research and consulting firm uh, based in the US in Boston. Um, I'm based in our Singapore office. And our goal at Lux Research is to help uh, organizations, companies, government institutes, uh, research organizations identify what are the new upcoming innovations that will be impacting industry, uh, where will there be new business models, new technologies, new materials that are going to change uh, the way we do business, and what do we need to be looking out for in the next three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. Um, if you see on the right box of this screen, there's a list of about 20 different technology areas that we have uh, teams focusing on and researching at Lux. And for today's presentation, I'm going to be pulling information from four or five of these different groups that are relevant to this particular industry. We're going to be looking at implications in the advanced materials sector. Uh, we're going to be looking at changes in alternative fuels. Um, autonomous systems and, and, and autonomy will be touched on, as well as energy storage. So um, in my job, I'm not an expert in any one of these areas, but I have the privilege to work with all the experts and all these teams and really pull together information to get a 360 degree view of, of where the industry is going to be going. So for today's presentation, I'd like to kind of group it into three stories to tell you. The first story, is uh, focusing on automobile efficiency. And by efficiency, we're speaking primarily of fuel efficiency. And what is the backdrop driving this, this race for efficiency in, in automotive? Um, we're then going to move to looking in the future at the car of 2025 and make some predictions on what that car is going to look like, what the material makeup is going to be, what sort of electrification is going to be used, and um, I'll, I'll take a chance and make a prediction of, of what we think the car of 2025 will be. And then we're going to look then beyond 2025 and say that if this is the car of 2025, what implications will this have for the industry, for the OEM, for the suppliers, and for the technology companies that are, are serving this industry? Um, I could probably talk all morning, but I'll do my best to keep it short and sweet and, and move along uh, quickly here. Thank you, thank you. So let's move, move on to the first area here and let's really dive into this whole concept of, of efficiency and a drive towards efficiency in the automobile industry. So it's no surprise here that we're operating in an era of, of cheap uh, uh, oil and cheap energy prices. I think we're still around $50 uh, dollars a barrel today. And in that scenario, as you can tell from my accent, I'm from the US, um, 
Americans love to drive their big cars. You know, the bigger the better, the more gas we can guzzle, the, the, the better it is. Um, but despite this era of, of cheap gas uh, and, and relatively low energy costs, you know, operating in this environment does have its disadvantages, namely greenhouse gas emissions. That's no surprise either. But I did show, want to show this chart just to set the stage. This is a pie chart of total U.S greenhouse gas emissions, and about 27%, almost 30%, comes from the transportation sector alone. And out of that 27%, about 75% of that piece comes directly from auto, with the rest coming from rail and, and airlines and, and so forth. So really in the U.S., this drive to efficiency is, 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 is becoming increasingly important, but it's not just the U.S. It's in, it's in Europe uh, that is leading that charge for efficiency. It's in China taking cars off the road as well. Uh, uh, in all in a bid to uh, move sustainability uh, things forward, uh, actions forward, and, and, and decrease uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So this is a little bit of a backdrop that we're working with today. Um, how does that play out for the industry? Well, you certainly know that there are increasingly stronger regulations and requirements for the auto industry to meet uh, uh, these particular emission standards. Particularly in the U.S., we're talking about the CAFE standard, um, where uh, they have a mandate that automobile uh, manufacturers must hit 54.5 miles per gallon target by 2025. Um, and you can see here in the chart how that plays out against different countries. If you move to the Europe region, they don't track uh, miles per gallon uh, target. They use a different standard where they're tracking carbon dioxide, grams of carbon dioxide uh, as well. And I think if you look in the EU, it's, their target is 95 grams of carbon dioxide um, uh, by the year 2021. So that's an even more aggressive uh, mandate than the U.S. CAFE standard mandate as well. Um, so these standards are in place and the automotive manufacturers are moving and suppliers are moving in this direction. Um, but nonetheless, you know, things happen and people don't hit the requirements and OEMs are paying fines for not meeting the milestones to hit these standards. As a matter of fact, uh, the chart below shows that by, uh, by 2010, OEMs were paying almost a billion dollars in fines for not being compliant with the uh, regulatory standards in their particular industries, so in their particular countries. So this is a huge uh, uh, issue. Bigger than the financial fines that they pay, because they make a lot of money and you can just pay your way out of the problem, but bigger than paying the fines um, are some issues around branding. And I think we all know and have heard about the VW scandal where VW was caught uh, basically cheating their emissions test by installing what they call a defeat device uh, through the testing. And VW was severely punished for these indis indiscretions. Um, their sales dropped by about 25 percent. Um, they need to invest what is estimated to be about $7 billion in retrofitting their supply chain, their software, and their manufacturing processes to solve this issue. And I think even more than the investment that's having to be made uh, for capital expenses, it's the damage to their brand. VW was known as the people's auto for years. And I think that brand is, is severely damaged now, and I don't think that's something that you can, you can put a price on as well. But all these things highlight the fact that OEMs are under intense pressure to meet these regulatory requirements, to show consumers, to show governments that they're working to hit the CAFE standards or standards in their particular countries, and that this is a top priority uh, for them as well. So, that's a, kind of a dismal picture, a little bit, you know, a very strict uh, uh, environment to be working in. But to make things more complex for OEMs, uh, new technologies and new companies are moving into this space with new materials and new technologies and business models. Um, it's causing tremendous amounts of, of disruption. I think we all know um, Apple and discussions about the iCar uh, and Apple's investment in this space. I think uh, Apple is referring to it as the ultimate mobile device. Um, we know about Tesla's move into uh, electric vehicles starting out at the high-end luxury market and now they're making significant inroads into the mid-tier market. 
And now we're seeing a lot of activity from Google and the Google car, and what are they going to do uh, with their autonomous and semi-autonomous uh, uh, driving systems as well? These are tremendous uh, market disruptors that are going to be impacting uh, traditional OEMs and traditional uh, supply chains as well. Um, so with this landscape, transportation is undergoing what basically equates to a revolution. Um, there are new players, there's new regulations, there's new technologies, there's new business models entering and operating uh, in these markets. Just to name a few, there's you know, companies and new materials uh, coming into the market that are there for light weighting, strength, thermal management. Um, there are new electrification applications, uh, 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 electric vehicle solutions coming out of the market. There's self-driving vehicles. There's new advances in alternative fuels, bio-based fuels, um, hydrogen fuel cells as well. Um, all of these things are coming. A lot of them are here today. And in order to hit those efficiency standards of 2025, all of these factors need to be addressed today. If you think about it, 2025 kind of sounds in your mind like it's far away, but it's really not. It's literally around the corner. In kind of the automotive industry, you can think of this as, as maybe one, possibly two model uh, iterations away, which is, is, is not very far at all. So let's start to drill down into some of these innovations and, and, and see what those are looking like um, uh, and what's happening today. On the materials side, I think you've probably all heard about uh, the Ford F-150, Ford's largest and best-selling vehicle, uh, particularly in the U.S. Ford moved to an all-aluminum body from their high-strength steel body. Um, this was a huge step. Um, and the success in this area uh, has allowed Ford to not only think about moving to aluminum as a new material, but start to invest heavily in other more exotic materials, whether it's carbon fiber, uh, graphene, or other materials uh, in the body as well. This move to aluminum saved Ford about 200 kilograms of weight from the body, um, and it really set them up for future investments in this area. You've uh, in the electrification side, uh, you probably know about the Chevy Malibu. They replaced their mild hybrid technology with a micro hybrid 12 volt technology, which decreased uh, the cost of the vehicle by about $4,000, but was able to maintain the same amount of efficiency for that vehicle. Um, Tesla is another example in, autom in automation and autonomous systems. Um, where they've recently announced their uh, driver assist or autonomous system um, that will allow the driver to basically drive hands-free uh, on the highway. And just a note about this, I saw a super frightening video. I think it was on Twitter or YouTube or something. It was just two days ago. Um, this technology is, is in the market now for Tesla, their, their hands-free autonomous driving on the highway. Someone was driving by one of these Tesla vehicles and the driver was in the seat, asleep in the car, on the highway, and the, you know, the car going by was, was videoing this on their car, and let me tell you, I can assure you that Tesla does not intend autonomous driving to mean you can just fall asleep in your car and not worry about it. Uh, we're not at that stage yet. But this is just an example of how technology is not only going to change the way we are thinking about suppliers and materials, it's going to change buyer behavior, consumer behavior as well. And a final example on the fuels front is Audi and their investments in e-tron fuels, which is really a range of new fuels from uh, ethanol blends to other bio-based uh, fuels to hydrogen as well. So these are all examples of technologies that are being worked on that are not you know, far away. These are being implemented today and happening today. And if you're not starting to think about these now, um, you're frankly behind the game and you really need to, to start uh, building your strategy around these market forces. So what do you need to do? So um, let's look and, and separate these into four areas. Um, materials, electrification, fuels, and autonomy. And it is our feeling that are, these are the four areas that are going to be driving the market forward that uh, OEMs and suppliers need to be thinking about that are going to drive this race to efficiency, this race to hit the 54.5 miles per gallon target by 2025 forward. Um, our analysts at Lux Research looked at many other different types of permutations, and it, it's these technology trends that are going to allow us to, to hit those particular targets. 
Now the challenge is that advances in any one area is not enough. If you move to an all, you know, carbon fiber lightweighted vehicle, you will still fall short of that 54.5 uh, uh, miles per gallon cafe standard. If you go to an all electrified vehicle, you will still fall short of that target. Uh, so it is a combination and a mix of these characteristics that you need to be thinking about. So the question is, what is the right mix? How do you compare and integrate these different technologies and materials together in order to most quickly hit those targets in the most cheap and efficient and effective way possible uh, for the consumer? Uh, so that's a, a little bit of the backdrop that we're working in today. Um, a little bit, bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's great. We've got low oil prices. Consumers can buy cars. It's fantastic. On the other hand, there's tremendous disruption in the market. Uh, disruption from existing players, new players, new materials, new technologies going forward. With that backdrop then, let's fast forward and let's try to predict what will that car look like in 2025. So after we've gone through a few iterations and we're meeting that 54.5 CAFE standard, what, what is that car going to look like in the future? Um, our team at Lux Research decided to figure that out, to look at those four areas we discussed before and try to make a prediction on which technologies will have the best adoption, the fastest growth, allowing OEMs to hit those targets with the lowest price for consumers. And so I'd like to share a little bit with you uh, about that model and that methodology and the results of, of, of that analysis here. Um, so in short, we looked at this quantitative model in these four categories. We looked at material options, uh, everything from steels to aluminum uh, composites to carbon fiber composites. We looked at, we did electrification, uh, which is looking at everything from basic start stop functionality to advanced 48 volt hybrids. We looked at automation as one of the criteria from basic driver assist technology all the way to fully autonomous drive as you'd see in maybe a, a Tesla. And we looked at different fuel options, everything from engine downsizing to changing the fuel blends of ethanol or octane ratings as well. There were many scenarios, but we identified four key pathways to that car of 2025 that uh, may have some success, and we'll look at those here. Um, so let's, let's start with a baseline, okay? Let's start with where we are today, and what does that car look like today? Uh, typical baseline would be, a car for today would be using minor high strength steel for strengthening in the base and frame, some uh, light weighting. Um, E10, uh, 92 octane fuel blend, that's pretty close to the environment uh, we are working, at, uh, working with today. In our first scenario that we looked at, um, we looked at a scenario where we used major carbon fiber light weighting for the frame and for the body. And we used an E25 99 octane fuel blend. We moved that scenario then into two and scenario three where we're using basic micro hybrid technologies and increased electrification as we went from scenario two to scenario three. And then finally in the last scenario, we looked at a 48 volt uh, micro-hybrid scenario with aluminum light weighting as well. And essentially through these different scenarios we're trying to f look at cars on one side that were a scenario that had all light weighting and no electrification through to less light weighting and maximum electrification. And we wanted to see what that mix of technologies looks like and how does that impact our car of, of 2025 going forward. Um, one interesting thing I'll point out, this was new to me, maybe I, there's some experts in the room and this is not um, new to you, but we did find out through our research that this CAFE standard of 54.5 miles per gallon doesn't necessarily mean 54.5 miles per gallon in the real world. Um, when they do the calculations for the CAFE standard, if you remember, this is the, the average fuel efficiency of an OEM's fleet. And to calculate that, they take credits for electric vehicles, for example, or vehicles running on alternative fuels, and those credits add up. It's not necessarily the average uh, miles per gallon of an average car on the street today. Based on our analysis, we found out that an average vehicle in a real world scenario is really hitting a more like 37 miles per gallon uh, in a real world scenario. So in other words, you know, for you and I, our cars on the street, uh, 
to hit that 54.5 CAFE standard, the real world performance is more like 37 miles per gallon. Kind of an interesting tidbit uh, there.